thank you so much for everything you've done on the program today. So our final plan question is, what role does prayer play in balancing the demands of motherhood? Role. Ah, uh, prayer is like a navigator. It's like when you are trying to go to, let's say, New Jersey, you have never been there before. You will look for your GPS or you go to Google Map to know the direction of where you are going to. So prayer is so important. So prayer is a tool. So you cannot be a child of God and you don't know what is called prayer. So, and what is a prayer? No, prayer is just like a spiritual communion with God. It's like when you're having a communication, communication is in like three ways. You have to have a sender, you have to have a receiver, and you have to have a feedback. So you can be a sender, you send your, your prayer. Your prayer is a message. You send it to God. So God is the receiver. And when your prayer ends, it's going to come back again as a feedback to you. So that's the, it's like a cycle, like a communication uh, model that you have to follow. So how can, does prayer play? Prayer pray, every, pray everything in our lives. Even the Bible says in that look, it said men ought always to pray and not to faint. You understand? There's no how you can do in this life. Without prayer, you are gone. Even the Bible says, this is the confidence that we have. That whenever you pray according to his will, he hears So how do you want to balance your life without no prayer? So as a mother, you need prayer. You can see the life of Lois and Eunice in the life of Timothy. They even Paul referred to the parents of uh, the, the mother and the grandmother of Timothy. You understand? They have a role. There is no how a mother will not know how to pray. Because if you don't have to know how to, it's going to affect your children. We have seen in the Bible, Anna was a prayer woman. That's why she gave back to Samuel. Samuel became, became a prophet in the land of Israel. And we have seen many of them in the Bible that they are prayer women. Deborah was a prayer woman now. She prayed. You cannot do the things of the kingdom. Even Esther. Esther was recorded that this woman fasted for three days. Dry fasting. No food, no water. And if she was able to save the land of Israel. Or else they would have been consumed. So prayer do a lot of roles for you as a mother. So if you don't know how to pray, you just have to go and learn how to pray. And how can you pray? It's through the Holy Spirit. Because some people cannot pray for one minute. For people to pray for a long time in his presence. I'm not saying pray longer. That's when we make your prayer to be answered. You know, the Bible says it's not that the ends of God is so short that cannot save. Neither is here. It's, it's, it's death. It's because our sins have separated us. You cannot be in sin and let the grace abound. God forbid. You understand? For you to know how to pray. It's still the method that we started. You have to be saved. When you are saved, you have to invite the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we can do nothing. We cannot. We need the Holy Spirit. So for you to know how to pray, first, you'll be saved. Two, you have to have the Holy Spirit. And the third thing, that's when you can know how to pray. But prayer is so important in everything. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Whether it is convenient, whether it's not convenient. So you cannot rule out prayer out of motherhood. Two of them are together. Now when you are praying now, it's like you are loading your cloud. When the cloud is formed, what is going to happen? The rain will fall. So it's not that you'll be praying now, you want the answer to be immediate. There are some prayers that we are enjoying now based on what our forefathers have done. The Bible says that I am a jealous God that visits iniquity of a father upon the third and fourth generation. And at the same time, he's a God that loves those who want that love him from third to fourth generation. So those are the things I was telling a friend about recently. He was talking about the goodness of God upon our lives. So I told her, 
that what you are enjoying now, somebody has laid a sacrifice for you. So what are you going to lay for the generations to come? So we cannot go out, we cannot go wrong in times of prayer. Prayer is so important as a mother and the Lord will help us. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So you heard it here. What role does prayer play in balancing the demands of motherhood? Prayer is everything. In short, prayer is everything. And what should we pray about? Everything. Everything to do with the issues of life, we should pray about. And we should lay that foundation for our families, our children, our spouses, our loved ones. And we should lay it through prayer. And just like you talked about, um, it's a communication tool. How else are you being an effective Christian if you don't first have that relationship, right? You're going to first have that relationship with God. And second, you're going to communicate through God through prayer. You're going to build that capacity. Now, like she said, that doesn't mean praying for hours and hours and hours. But as the Bible says, we should pray without ceasing, right? And so we should pray about all things. So you're going to accept Christ into your life and have a relationship with God. And after that, you're going to give begin communicating him with him on a daily basis. You're going to begin dwelling in his presence, right? You're going to uh, make sure that you're feeding on the right things. So you're going to be reading the Bible. You're going to be uh, listening to godly music and you're going to be uh, listening and consuming um, righteous things. And then from that, you're going to also invite the Holy Spirit to come into that communication with God and ask the Holy Spirit to ask you what it is that you should be praying about um, so that over time you'll build that capacity. Um, so that was wonderful. Um, just as you said, the prayers that that maybe uh, people in your family, grandmothers and great grandmothers prayed, now we're reaping the benefits of it, of those blessings, of that time that people spent in relationship and communication with God so that um, so that we could uh, live righteous lives. And so we should in turn do the same thing for our children. We should lay that foundation because the prayers that we pray for our children will affect their lives. Thank you.